I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in my own Nicaragua. Today we're going to be covering some just we're going to be going into the stats of safety, not just here in Nicaragua. In fact, we're not even going to focus on Nicaragua. We're going to talk about the entire region, all of North America and all of Central America. I know some of you consider that one place. Some of you consider it two. Some people consider it three. Doesn't matter. We're going to hit all of the countries in that region and compare how we're looking in 2023 because I think the results are going to surprise you and not the places that you think we're going to be talking about. I know you think Nicaragua and US, they're always the place where not interesting this year. We'll mention them, but who is a lot more dangerous? It's going to surprise you. It really is. All right, we're going to get to that right after the bump. Alright, so today's episode has been a while coming, and we have to wait for the statistics to come out for 2023. Now, it's important to note that the statistics across the region are available for 2023, with the exception of US and Canada. They trail by a number of months. So the... Okay, we lost power. Alright, so today I had a message from someone who was extolling the virtues of one of the countries in the region and swearing up and down that they were so much safer than Nicaragua. And they were saying Nicaragua is safe enough, but they're certainly not as good as this other country. And so I was digging into the statistics and realized we had some really interesting numbers to play with and things that are worth looking at. So we're going to just do a little bit of running down the statistics. Like I said, in 2023, we have the statistics for most of the countries in the region. The North American countries tend to report partially or later, so we're a little bit lagging on those statistics, but all through the southern countries, the Central American ones, we have the actual statistics. So we're just going to start from the south and work our way north, and then we'll talk about what these statistics mean. But starting in the far south or east, do we have kind of a standard southeast progression that we always do. So Panama, which is well known as one of the wealthiest of the Latin American countries and, and generally has their act together, stands at, and, and what all of these numbers are homicide rates per 100,000 uh, uh, people in the country per year uh, for the year in question, 2023 in this case. So we'll just use a solid number. So the number for Panama is 11.5. That means for out of, on average, 100,000 people in Panama, 11.5 of them will be killed uh, by homicide during that year. So 11.5, then we just have to worry, work with a, a straight number. Bigger numbers are bad, right? Uh, Costa Rica. Now, <laughs> I, we're coming right into it right at the beginning. This is the shocking number. We were sure that Costa Rica was, was going to be about the same as Panama. And in the past, they have been worse, but really close. So we, we just lump them together. But this is important. In 2022, and for the years previous, Costa Rica was holding at just over 12. That's almost unnoticeably different than Panama. But in 2023, Costa Rica shot up to 17.3. That is pretty significant. That's not just a big change, but it goes up to a really big number. Coming in next is Nicaragua. And we talk about this one all the time, so no one should be surprised unless you're not familiar with the numbers. We talk about what they mean. And that is at 6.2. So this is what prompted the conversation that I was talking about. We were talking about Nicaragua and Costa Rica, and they were like, Nicaragua is safe-ish, but certainly not as safe as Costa Rica. Well, it's almost exactly three times more dangerous from a homicide perspective in Costa Rica. And we generally expect uh, violent crime to track is just generally related uh, for the most part. So this is important. Nicaragua has just a little bit more than half the homicide rate of Panama and about one third that of Costa Rica. Those are big differences uh, in this region. Now, Honduras, just to the north of Nicaragua, comes in, we already know this, worst in the region, one of the worst in the world, uh, but improving steadily year after year. So this is way better than it has been over the last several years at 31.1. That's a big, big number. And of all the countries that you're going to really be looking at, this one stands out as, you know, that's a number you kind of want to worry about. However, just be aware that as a tourist and generally as an expat, these numbers aren't as meaningful as it seems. Just having 31.1 out of 100,000 people on average in the population being killed during a year does not imply that by being a tourist, you're going to be that tiny, tiny, tiny number, far less than 1%. The, the bulk of any of the crimes in all of these countries is always centered around uh, criminal activity, is always like the leading, and domestic violence, sadly, is, is one of the, the other big areas that is, that's true the world over. 
right? So when you're talking about being a tourist in a country, it is extremely rare that you have a homicide rate in any country that in some way directly applies to tourists. In most places, tourists are simply their own number and generally incredibly low compared to normal rates because they're, they're not involved in criminal activity normally and they are not normally involved in domestic violence. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, in Salvador, now this is El Salvador, this big change for them. They've been year over year, massive improvements and they're now coming in at 2.4. So that's a little bit more than one third, but less than a half for sure, than even Nicaragua. And a tiny number compared to things like Panama or Costa Rica. Uh, next up is Guatemala. Now Guatemala has been known to be, to be pretty dangerous for some time, but this is the shocker at 16.7, which is fairly high. Again, almost entirely in drug trafficking areas, not something that applies to the normal population. People who live there and live normal lives are, are generally pretty safe from, from this type of crime. But at 16.7, that means that it is solidly safer, but in the same category as Costa Rica. But this is really important. Guatemala and El Salvador traditionally have been the, well, at least we're not as bad as them, kind of countries. And for Panama, they can still say that with Guatemala. With Costa Rica, they can no longer say that about anyone in Central America. So now, very importantly, in 2023, of Latin Central America, uh, Costa Rica is by very clear numbers the most dangerous place in the region. The one exception to it that keeps us from being able to say that it is the most dangerous in all of Central America is that Belize, the Commonwealth country uh, that speaks English, so not part of the CA4, not part of traditional Latin America, but is geographically in Central America, but only geographically, not culturally, not historically, and never part of the Federation, uh, is standing at 21.5. So that's really high compared to these other countries. That is, even compared to Costa Rica, a high number. Uh, so you, you get a little bit more dangerous there, noticeably more dangerous. It's more, when you get into numbers like Costa Rica uh, and Belize, it's, it definitely becomes palpable uh, when you're in those places. And certainly um, um, Honduras. And, and of course, I say Costa Rica is the most dangerous, assuming we're ignoring Honduras, right? We have to just ignore Honduras completely because it's it's so far off the charts. And, and Honduras is doing a lot uh, to correct that, but, but it's going to be um, kind of off the radar for safety for some time. Coming up next is Mexico. Now, this is the first of the North American countries instead of the Central American countries. Uh, in Mexico, we don't have really solid numbers. They only give us half-year numbers, so we have to double them. So this could be off by, by small amounts. Uh, but it's somewhere between 24 and 29, which makes it more dangerous than everywhere in Central America, except for Honduras. All right, so Mexico solidly very dangerous, uh, very noticeably much more dangerous than a Costa Rica or Guatemala, uh, a full, more than double the danger of a Panama, um, and, and, and falls into one of our, our highest categories. Then north of there, we have the United States. Now, the United States lags a little bit in the numbers, so we're looking at 2022 as a comparison. It's just, it's always a year behind in the numbers, so it's always a slightly different comparison, but it's, because we're always comparing one year behind, it's essentially a uh, useful to statistic. So for tracking them, it does what it does. So the U.S. stands at 6.3. It's nice to be able to claim as Nicaraguans, oh, we're 0.1 better than the United States. So technically Nicaragua is safer in a homicide way, at least violent crime could be skewed a different way. We're only looking at homicide in this particular uh, statistic, but they're essentially the same. And we say this a lot, Nicaragua and the United States are basically the same when it comes to crime rate. Now, some things that are visibly seem to be true about that is that uh, Nicaragua has a lot more what we would call even distribution of crime. You're much more likely to find crime rates varying relatively uh, small amounts between the dangerous areas and the safe areas. Uh, you have a low level of danger everywhere and nowhere has massive spikes. Of course, it goes without saying that, you know, downtown San Juan del Sur has a bit more crime than other places. There are barrios in Managua that have more crime than other places. Absolutely, there are hotspots, but in general, the hotspots are not that big of areas and not that hot. Uh, the United States, on the other hand, is very spiky with certain areas that everyone knows, places like downtown Baltimore, uh, East St. Louis, 
south side of Chicago. These have really dangerous zones, things that, that no one in Central America has ever witnessed anything coming close to it. And then huge swaths of incredibly safe that are much safer. And so you can isolate yourself in really safe areas uh, and avoid areas that are, that are a bit more crime ridden. So it's a different distribution we believe, I don't have research on this, it's very hard to actually dig into, uh, between the U.S. and Nicaragua. This is the, the sense that we get from it. And then, of course, north of the United States is Canada, and Canada, as we already know and everyone assumes, comes in at the best numbers in the region. However, it's very close to El Salvador, which is a little bit of a surprise, but if you've been following El Salvador at all, you know just how safe they've become. But currently, Canada stands at roughly 2.25. Again, Canada, like the United States, trails in their numbers. The one thing that's worth noting there, and, and it's important to keep the context, Canada is ridiculously safe. Its homicide rate is so low compared to the rest of the region that it's easy to have really big spikes or, or anomalies happen because their numbers are so low. One mass shooting would throw things off completely in Canada. Not that they've had one, but if they were to, it would throw off these numbers in the year that that happened. So if that happened on December 31st or January 1st, it would make numbers be wildly different based on the year that it happened in. So that's important to keep in mind. But Canada is experiencing a spike and currently in the 2024 news uh, and in some of the 2023 news, we're seeing uh, reports that Canada is seeing violent crime like never before, and they're seeing increases in homicide rates that are close to 40 or higher, maybe even 50% per year increases. Now, you can take 40% of nothing and it's still nothing, right? So we're talking about a very small number. A 40% increase is certainly worrying. It's certainly something that Canada needs to be looking into and figuring out what's going on. Uh, but looking at places like the National Post and the, um, the Stats Canada um, and, and sites like that, uh, Global News from Canada, all of these are reporting that suddenly Canada's homicide rate is hitting 30-year highs and increasing at very worrisome rates. And a lot of this started during COVID with the lockdowns. This changed a lot of things everywhere in the world, but Canada especially went from um, a, a very feeling free country to one where people are actively talking about their fear of the government on a regular basis. I don't know how much has actually changed other than visibility, but the actions of the government during COVID seem to have triggered a lot of changes in society. And Canada may be looking at a very different future than its past has been. And we're certainly seeing potential indicators of that in their homicide rate numbers. However, if they were to have a 50% increase rate uh, in their homicide year over year, we'd still be looking at several years for them to catch up to the US or Nicaragua. They would catch up to El Salvador in no time at all, but in about six months, uh, assuming El Salvador doesn't continue on its track of dropping several percent. Like if, if, if San Salvador stayed on its 2023 drop track into 2024, it would be at like 0.1 already by this time in the year. Like their drop rate was precipitous, which is fantastic. Good for them. Canada, however, is increasing very quickly. So they would catch up with most other countries in the region, places like the U.S. and Nicaragua, in just a matter of years, three or four years, it seems like. Uh, and then it would take uh, several more years after that to catch up to the Panamas and another uh, one to two years to catch up to a Costa Rica, for example. <clears throat> so uh, it still would be a very long way and it would be hard for them to maintain those kinds of increases year after year after year. But it, that is what we're seeing, and, and that is very worrisome for Canada. So that's that's a bit of a surprise. 30-year highs are something to be worried about, even if the overall is incredibly low. But overall, Canada remains the safest. So all that, keep that in context. They've become not as much wildly the safest, but that's it. Um, so the thing that's really interesting here is... One, we already know, right? Nicaragua is crazy safe. It's safer than the U.S., just barely. It's basically the same as the U.S. Uh, that Nicaragua and Salvador and the U.S. and Canada and to reasonable degrees, Panama and, and maybe Guatemala and, and basically Costa Rica fall into reasonably safe, even at Costa Rica 17.3. We don't actually worry when going to Costa Rica. You do have to be warned about some areas, unlike coming to Nicaragua where you like just go anywhere. Yes, there are certainly areas of Costa Rica. I have been at places in Costa Rica where I'm really worried about my safety, and I've never experienced that in Panama. I've never experienced that in Nicaragua. Um, I've Okay, I have experienced that in Guatemala, but not as much as in Costa Rica. Um, I've experienced that in Belize, but again, not as much um, and, and definitely maybe Mexico kind of 
uh, uh, getting a little bit towards that. I have been to Cancun. Cancun is an extremely uh, dangerous city. Um, so Costa Rica really stands out to me, both in my personal observations, like the, this number doesn't actually surprise me. I've been to Costa Rica in the last two years and there are places that you end up going as a tourist that are terrifying. That's a big deal. Costa Rica is the only one of any of these that has a place where a tourist is meant to be that feels like it doesn't have a police presence, that feels like it doesn't have its act together. Now, in all of this, there are some important takeaways. And probably the biggest one is to understand that even the most dangerous country in this region, Honduras, if you were to travel there as a tourist and you were to do careful things, go to tourist locations, be sensible about how you travel, not go off the beaten path without doing your research, not go into foolish areas, not do foolish activities, you would find yourself actually quite safe, not as safe as if you were traveling in Italy or Spain or Germany, but you would be pretty safe. You'd be able to travel. You wouldn't need to worry. I have traveled Honduras. I've not been worried, but you do notice that it has more crime. Like that is something you will notice. There's a feeling to the place. There's a behavior. There's a sense that you should get, right? It's part of your, part of your built-in mechanisms for self-preservation. You should sense that some of these places are more dangerous than others. Some of them, like Canada and El Salvador, Nicaragua, and the United States, by and large, you're going to be able to travel nearly anywhere and feel relatively confident in your safety at all times. In the others, you will have to, you know, have some common sense, be slightly careful, but in nearly all of them, you're going to be able to, in all of them, you're going to be able to travel and, and be a little bit careful and be safe. You shouldn't look at these numbers and say, under normal circumstances, ah, oh, this is a place I won't go. It is, a, it is just a tool to help you understand those locations, especially in Honduras and Guatemala. The crime that you're going to experience is nearly all drug and gang related. These are not things that normally spill over into tourist areas. Mexico has some spillover that is specifically a problem. Costa Rica, we don't know why it has this sudden spike, so we can't point to such an obvious factor, but we could make some guesses, and I'm sure someone watching from Costa Rica will pop in and say, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's because of massive immigration issues. We could be wrong with that, but that is a very likely issue if you hear the dog chewing. I've had so many problems trying to get the video done to Today. I am, this is the latest we've ever been, and I apologize. Every time I go to make the show, we either lose power, we're in a huge storm here, we either lose power temporarily, and my camera and everything keeps going, but we lose the lights. I wasn't able to work in the light today because um, we just kept getting interruptions. Finally got the recording going with the lights on, then we lost power. When I finally got that going, I got interrupted, wasn't able to finish, it. then we lost power again. It's been, it's been crazy, and so I've given up on trying to keep the dog from making noise in the background, and I'm just recording and trying to get this out for you guys. So it's been a rough day here trying to do these. But I really like this topic and I want to do this every year and have a running kind of idea of what's going on in the area because understanding where we are, how we compare to the other countries in the region, what that means to you, how to apply it, and what those trends are over time, especially if you're looking at being an expat rather than a tourist, then it can be really important to understand which countries are getting safer, which are getting more dangerous, which go up and down, which are in a constant trend one way or another. All these things, I'll do my best to link some of the uh, statistics in the bottom so you have tools to work from more than I'm going to show you here on the show. And um, yeah, don't be afraid to travel, but certainly understand Latin America, the Western Hemisphere, including the US and Canada, are much more dangerous than our European counterparts, but relatively safe in the general sense. There's very few places where you actually need to worry about traveling. These numbers just aren't that bad, especially in the modern era. And all of these countries are taking actions to try to keep you safe as a tourist, as an expat, um, and, and realistically, you can be quite safe. And of course, if you're looking at things like enclaves, islands, anything like that, these statistics are generally useless. These things apply when you're in the, the main population. You're going to be in capital cities, main cities, out in the villages. You're just going to be in normal everyday life with normal everyday people. That is generally where these statistics are going to apply in this way. You go out to Roatan in Honduras, you're going to find that it, it may be safer than Canada. It's probably not, but it could be, right? You're, you're isolating yourself so much in such a different population that, that all of those things go out the window. Just like Cancun is one of the most dangerous parts of Mexico, Isla Mujeres, which is just a few miles away, is incredibly safe. And the difference is, is just mind-boggling how different one is from another, even though they can see each other. 
uh, and it's just, you know, the factors vary uh, quite quickly from one place to another. So don't be afraid to travel, but also use these statistics to understand, especially we look at these a lot here in Nicaragua, and of course El Salvador loves to point to them as well, but here in Nicaragua we get so much suggestion of it's not safe, and you need to look at these and say, well, maybe it's not. Do I consider? What do I consider safe? Find a number. Pick a number. And then say, because most people who are saying it's not safe are coming from places that are more dangerous, or at least similar, right? And so if you're coming from the United States and you say, well, Nicaragua is so dangerous, you should be saying, and the U.S. is more dangerous, right? But you don't, because it's not actually that bad. But these statistics are tools to help you understand. Most people think nothing of going to Costa Rica. They think nothing of coming from the United States at 6.3 and going to Costa Rica at 17.3, but then bulk at coming to Nicaragua at 6.2, the safest of all of those that we just mentioned, and safer than Panama, which people often go to, and safer than Guatemala, which people go to almost as much, right? Now, some of them, like Honduras, people go to less, but Nicaragua is generally safer than the places you're coming from and most of the places you want to go to. Certainly safer than Mexico, which is the most touristed in the area. In fact, yes, Honduras and Guatemala, very high, but Mexico and Costa Rica, higher than Guatemala. Both of them higher than Guatemala. Both of them are main tourist centers. These are the very high risk, and Guatemala is a decently high tourist center. When you're in Guatemala, you will notice loads and loads of tourists compared to other places. Surprisingly, the tourist-based economies are also the most dangerous, except for Honduras. It's always, except for Honduras. And, and that's really important to understand. It seems like the more dangerous it is, except for Honduras, the more willing Americans are, and a lot of people around the world, to go there. And when it starts getting safe, El Salvador and Nicaragua, is when the foreign state departments and homeland department, whatever, start issuing these warnings. Because when you have a Mexico or a Costa Rica, you don't need to issue a warning. Any casual research will turn up, well, these are places with, with high, scary violence rates. Maybe we should be worried. But places like Nicaragua and El Salvador, if you did any research, you'd immediately find that they're incredibly safe. And so foreign departments who don't want people to travel there need to make an effort to convince them that it's dangerous. So go look at the U.S. State Department. This is actually a great example. Now you know, if you live in the United States, if the U.S. is being honest, if the State Department is real, then you will go to their page and it will say, we recommend that you get to Nicaragua as soon as you read this because it is safer than where you are. Right, because it's the American State Department and Nicaragua is safer than the U.S. It should have a negative travel warning because it should be a travel suggestion. We recommend that you go here because it's safer. And then also check out Costa Rica at three times the homicide rate. No matter what you think of Costa Rica, if the State Department is honest and doing its job, it should have some pretty serious warnings, the same level of warnings that you get for Guatemala and, and maybe not quite as much as Mexico, but very close, right? And it should be the same as Belize. Like, they're very, very close. What warnings do they have? And then compare to Nicaragua and possibly El Salvador, right? Go look at what their travel warnings are. And I guarantee the safer you are, more or less, the more they're going to warn against this, and the more dangerous you are, the less they actually care. Because they know that you may just be going, like, whatever. Really important information. I have not looked this up. I'm telling you, it's worth going to look. I guarantee the results will be very interesting. But overall, I hope these numbers are useful. We're going to provide them more often. Get down there with your questions and comments. Um, we did get quite a few kind of nasty comments in the last few days because we have some good content, so it just kind of happens. Um, it's really an indicator of having a good day. And thank you for the people who made up the false information about Costa Rica that prompted me to need to look this up and discover some really interesting information that makes... This is great, right? It is really great to now know. Every time someone's like, well, but Costa Rica, you can just be like, look, Costa Rica's great. It's a cool country. It's got a lot going for it. If you're happy in Costa Rica and you think and you feel you're, you're comfortable with what its safety rating is, got good news for you. Nicaragua is way cheaper. So much safer. Not close. Not comparable. Not in the ballpark. So much safer. And El Salvador does the same thing again to Nicaragua. You can't even compare us right now. In general, yes. Right now, El Salvador, we got to give it to them. They have really done an amazing job over the last couple of years. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel and make content and information like this possible and 
help me deal with all the not having power and stuff, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And actually, one of the things I did while I was making the show today is I went out and had coffee with Jillian, who was on the show like a couple weeks ago. Uh, thanks to her for being on and for coming out and joining us for coffee in person today. If you would be so kind as to share the show on social media, post the link somewhere that people will see it. Tell someone about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And of all days, I'm sure I will miss this today, but I will try to pop up extra episodes on here at the end of the show. Please click on one or more and help tell the algorithm that you love the show.